is Audrey, and my wife Julie is sitting there at the table. Uh, please, as the night goes on, come up and talk to us and say hi. And we'd love to meet everybody. So Audrey is 11 years old. She was born about uh, a month early. She had a cleft palate, um, a, a heart issue. Uh, basically, it was in what's called an ASD. It's a hole in her heart. And the doctors at the time said she was low on blood. We didn't really know what that meant. You know, how is a baby born low on blood? So <clears throat> they explained it that she was a premature uh, baby and that that is very common. So over the course of the next three weeks, uh, Audrey received her first blood transfusion. Um, and then we got sent home. They thought everything's fine, you know, going home. So we were home, what, about a month? or so, about two months. And I took Audrey to the pediatrician for a wellness visit. But we did note that she hadn't been eating very well. Um, she was very lethargic, and, you know, even more so than a, you know, your typical newborn. But she's our first child, so uh, you know, we weren't really sure. We just thought we would tell the doctor. We were more concerned that she wasn't eating very well. Thankfully, our pediatrician, um, as soon as he came in the room, he looked at her and noticed that she was very pale. And so they did a CBC, and her hemoglobin count came back at 4.1, and that's getting pretty low. So they called the Children's Hospital and told them we were coming. Uh, my wife met me, and we basically drove straight to the hospital from there. Over the course of the next uh, three days or so, I received two blood transfusions, um, and she got to... Basically, we, will, we met with the hematologist for the first time, who is still her hematologist, Dr. Raj. Um, and basically, he said he thinks that it's something called diamond black fan anemia. Never heard of that. Most people haven't. Um, so we did a little research at the hospital and, and figured out, you know, this is what it was. And over the course of the next two months, they did a bunch of other tests because at the time, they, there were only a few genes known, and there's no other test to say, hey, this is DBA. They kind of rule everything else out. Uh, since then, she has been diagnosed as uh, what we call RPL5, um, so she has a, a problem with her uh, genetics, uh, her chromosome, the gene there at RPL5, and that's why her body doesn't make red blood cells. Um, we waited, and, oh, sorry, <laughs> we waited, uh, about a year and a half to try prednisone. Um, for those of you that know something about DBA, some patients do respond to prednisone. Trevor, he's one of them. Uh, we waited for Audrey for a number of reasons. One, her growth wasn't great, which is pretty typical with a, a DBA child. Uh, but also she had to have her cleft palate repaired and we also were talking to the cardiologist about what to do about, with her heart. Um, so that month, what, year and a half goes by, we start her on prednisone. Um, her hemoglobin comes up. It's the first time she had ever made red blood cells. Uh, so we got pretty excited. Um, and that was her form of treatment for a few years. The problem with prednisone is unless you get a small, small dose, there's gonna be a lot of side effects. Um, a couple of years back, Audrey was diagnosed with osteoporosis. Um, she had to do treatments for that. Um, then her growth was just really being inhibited. So we went to a place called Camp Sunshine um, over the summer. We met in person, Carol and Jim, and a number of other families. And the doctors that are considered the experts with this illness were there, and they really encouraged us to change her treatment, take her off prednisone, go back to transfusions, and let's see what her growth does. The good news is we've done that, um, I guess it's been a little over six months, and she's growing like a weed. <laughs> so that's the good news. Um, and thankfully, her bones are great too. Let's <laughs> throw that out. She doesn't have osteoporosis. Um, the problem is, there's always, when you get something good, there's always something bad with the diamond black fan anemia. And that's why these are so these events are so important because they do raise the money for the critical research that needs to be made. So Audrey gets a blood transfusion once a month now, um, about every four weeks, so once a month. 
And we have also, she, well, she's undergone two MRIs, which are called Ferris scans. It's a T2 MRI. And what that does is it measures the iron in her body. Um, I'm gonna go into a little more science. Basically, when you have a transfusion-dependent person, every time they receive a bag of blood, or two bags of blood, they're basically getting a whole bag of iron, okay? And it's bypassing your digestive system. So, you know, when we eat, a lot of the iron we take in, it just passes right through us. Well, when a DBA patient or any other patient that doesn't make red blood cells receives iron, or I mean blood, they're receiving a bunch of iron. Your body has no mechanism to deal with that. What it does is it takes the iron, it goes to the bone marrow. Their bone marrow is full of the, this, this iron uh, compound. And basically a molecule then takes it and stores it in organs. Uh, one of the first organ to do that with is the liver. And she just had another T2 MRI a month ago, or a little longer than that. And she does have elevated liver iron. And we knew that was gonna happen, so it wasn't a surprise. So now she starts chelating. It's a chelation therapy. Um, we're fighting the insurance company because they don't want to give it to us. Um, or not give it to us, we still have to pay for it, but they don't even want to give us the opportunity for that, so we're appealing that. Um, and the chelation medicine binds with the iron in the liver and then gets rid of it. Um, it's, let me just put it this way. If you'd like to know more about that, I'll talk to you about it, okay? But uh, so, you know, with all this going on, we decided we wanted to do something. Once the chaos in the, the rail uh, roller coaster was over, you know, which it's never fully over, but we can tell you all about that too. But we wanted to do something. We wanted to give back and to also help others as well as Audrey. So uh, my mom and our friend Shannon, who are up here at the table with us, they started doing a benefit in Louisville. And in order to advertise for that, we started a Facebook page. Um, I, one day we were go, taking Audrey to a Zumba class um, and we decided, hey, let's start putting some of these videos on the Facebook page because you know, we can advertise and also just show all these cute videos that Audrey's doing. Really no intention more than that. We just thought people around the Louisville would, would you know, tune in and, and we could give information. Well, she now has 1.7 million followers on Facebook. <laughs> YouTube, man, this YouTube, she almost, she's just about at the million mark. Um, she's gaining more and more every, uh, right there with every week video. that we post videos on there. Um, and through this opportunity, that's how we've been able to really raise a lot of awareness to fundraise and you know really try to get uh, a cure for this thing um, you know we really need a better treatment uh, you know at the minimum a better treatment um, and uh, we've been really honored to meet a bunch of people you saw you know the Rachel Ray show um, the first video that was on this girl I encourage everyone here uh, at some point to check out the scene for superheroes uh, social media on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Um, they're wonderful. Um, Audrey was their first video. It wasn't that one. They've actually, Audrey's done two, and we're gonna be doing another one here soon. But they uh, really do a great job for a lot of children that are, you know, uh, have it tough, you know, that, that are fighting for uh, their lives in some cases, but uh, really good organization. So basically, Audrey, she just dances, she sings, does karaoke, and just has fun. And that's what we post, you know. Um, she really enjoys doing that. And uh, so that's where we're at. What's that? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to tell you all about that. Audrey also put a cookbook out. So um, you can see one of them over on the uh, table. Uh, if you'd like to purchase one, uh, or you know you can bid on that one, but if you'd like to purchase one, we brought some extras. Uh, we're, we asked twenty dollars, and every ounce or ounce, every penny of the money goes to the DBA Foundation. So we've already recouped costs from having it printed, and everything that we get in at this point goes to the DBA Foundation. Um, the other thing about the uh, the bidding, 
whoever wins that, Audrey is willing to personalize it for you. So uh, come and see us, and Audrey will autograph whatever you want. Uh, the shirts, the cookbook, you know, whatever, whatever you'd like her to do. <laughs> you want to talk? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not going to say that. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Well, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let Jim take over from here. And again, just thank you all so much. Come up and say hi to us. We'd love to meet everybody and you can get a picture with her too. So <laughs> thank you all.